Dr. Jameson's repair shop. Uh, now that we have the quarter panel uh, close enough to where I need it, uh, I'm getting ready to pull the quarter panel off. So this video is, you'll see me take this quarter panel off and we'll look at work inside and depend on how long it takes to get this panel off, we maybe start work on the inside in this video. But for sure, this video will contain taking this whole panel off. So there's more that I'm going to be doing here than taking off just a quarter panel. I'm going to be taking off the rocker, and I'm going to be, take, I'm going to be inspecting the uh, inner structure behind the rocker. Uh, I already know up here where this floor piece is that the, uh, the inner part of the uh, structure has a hole in it, so it needs to be fixed. So that uh, brings me to another task that I had to do, and I've already got it set up, is... Uh, supporting this area making sure it doesn't fold or go that way so this is what i got done i'm going to bring you in and i'll show you what i've, I've uh, been working on on this i didn't figure it was worth uh videoing because really i mean once you see it anybody can figure it out so let me get you down off the, the tripod and we'll go through what's going on here all right for starters in here i've made a uh, I used a piece of three-quarter threaded rod and I welded a nut on it and I put a pin through. This is just a hitch pin. It's a, I think it's a half inch hitch pin, uh, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever fits in there. And then I double nutted it here with a washer. These are uh, just black iron pipe with a coupler and it sits up into there. I think I sh this is probably in the, in the other video, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm gonna go through it again. Same deal over there. And then I took a piece of this angle, which is just bed, bed frame, and I uh, cut it to length, welded it there on the B-pillar, welded it to that B-pillar, and welded it to, on both sides of the angle to this black iron pipe. So this actually, you can't see this, but it'll actually, you can shake the whole car without moving that. So that's a, that's a strong structure, so this will, this will protect the B-pillar from going in that way. Plus it has a little strength to hold it from going that way. And the piping has support to carry this area here. And it's touchy because all I turn it about a quarter of a turn and I start to see these, these gaps open up. So it's, it'll do its job. Plus I have it adjustable just for that reason alone. Um, in case I need to tweak it a bit before I put it all back together. But I'll be checking. Uh, the door. Both sides, I've checked them already. The doors close nice. Let's give you here. So they've got to still have a nice gap. And they open nice. You might be thinking, well, what's holding the back end and the front end? Well, in, um, if I didn't cover it in the last video, I picked up these stabilizer jacks for campers. And actually, thinking about it when I was putting them in there, I said, gee, I should have left that trailer hitch on. <laughs> It would have been a great place to support it. But anyway, it's gone, and I'm not putting it back on just to support it. So I had an extra set of these cribs I built. I built these first, and I didn't like them. So I went and built a new set. And they're under the front of the car now, and they're exactly the same as the one that are under the axle. I'm leaving it on the uh, dollies because I needed room to... If I put it down off the dolly, I wouldn't be able to get a drill in underneath to... Uh, get those spot welds out of the rocker. But anyway, that's a different story. So this is supported here, solid. And basically the same deal on the front of the car. It's a little bit cluttered up here. I've been rearranging things to make room for this. So I get the same thing here. Um, that's sitting there nice and firm. It's not going anywhere. And those only are just snugged up lightly. They're not cinched straight up tight. And she's sitting down on the frame there. So that's what I've got done for support. Um, that's necessary for taking this car to what I want to do to this car. You, you have to do that. Or I feel you have to. Otherwise, it's probably going to be a pretty big mess. All right. So now that we got uh, the support in place, like that up front. Supported there, supported there, supported there. 
The door gaps are good, supported inside. We'll be taking that this quarter panel off. And uh, then I can get a full access to the wheel tub, um, all the wheel house in the back, rear wheel house, extensions and all that stuff. Plus, there's a, a bit of dollying and stuff to straighten that, uh, this area out here. So that needs to be straightened out So and welded on the back and dollied so it's smooth. All right, let's get at her. All right, let's time to take this old quarter panel off. So we got some spot welds there. There's a little bit of, uh, I'm probably gonna, just gonna cut that off there. Just gonna cut it, because that needs to be all replaced anyway, I, but I don't wanna cut the, the valance flange. I wanna keep it in, intact, but the other one I just want, I can cut it off. I'll just cut it off right where the flange needs to be. And then there's a bit of lead right here that will have to be melted out. And then there's some spot welds along here like this. All the way up to... Actually... No, the spot welds don't go... That might be one, that might be the last of the uh, spot welds here. And then they step down into this, this drip channel. Where the gasket actually sits. So there was spot, there's spot welds all on there. It's not focusing, but there it goes. So there's spot welds all through here, through this drip channel. And then there's a welded spot right here. They MIG welded it, it looks like. Maybe it was a stick weld, but I'm not sure. Doesn't matter, it's welded there. And then along here, it was spot welded, but this is pretty rusty anyway, so I don't expect there's gonna be uh, too much to deal with there. I don't think it folded over. No, it's, it runs in there. We'll find as we go. And then there's spot welds along here, obviously, on the inside. Up on this, because this just folds over on a flange. The only issue is going to be right here. There, it looks like there's a spot weld between this and here. So I may have to uh, burn, uh, cut out the spot weld, this piece right here, and get it out of the way. I really didn't want to do that, but I'm going to have to anyway because... Well, actually, yeah, it's all hooked. It's all hooked into this uh, wheel tub. And then there's spot welds. Oh, there's stuff in the way here. Of course, spot welds down around the flange. Really an awkward position. I'm in the wrong hand with the camera. So it runs spot welds all down along. I can't even see my pointer all along. Pretty straightforward. So a lot of spot welding to cut free. So let's get at her on it. Well, it's easy to get at, except for that, except for that one right there. It's all pretty easy to get at. So let's see what we can do with it. All right, I just want to point out that it's brazed right here as well. So uh, if you're doing this work, just a note that it is brazed at that corner and it's not leaded or anything, it's just a braze. Gonna have some touch up to do on this uh, door jam once I get that, that uh, plug weld all those holes. No, that's not a big deal. Good indexing holes to put the th uh, quarter panel back on. <laughs> all right, I just wanted to show you the braze.
the first to see in, since 1965, the inside of all this. <laughs> I'd say March of 1965, early March. I think it was March 1st this car was built. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it doesn't matter. It was 1965 or late 64. So a lot of work had to go in to get this off, of course, as usual. And the flanges will, took a beating, lots of holes, uh, lots of uh, hammer dolling. But it's necessary to complete the inside. So let's, I know it's already broke free, but I hadn't taken it off. So let's just give her a go, see what's underneath this thing. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you guys are here for to witness it. I'll set this aside. She's a dandy. Wow. Look at that glory. All right, I'm going to get you down off the tripod and we'll have a look at the uh, best we can of the damage that's in here. There's a lot of it. But now I have room to work. I, I started videoing uh, on time lapse uh, a long time ago when I stopped it because it's really just uh, breaking spot welds and all along here. Funny thing about this car, with all the rust, the, these uh, trunk lip rails are a really nice shape. Well, they were in better shape before I beat them up, but I can hammer them dolly them back around. I had to cut a little bit of it off here, the lip there's just nothing left there anyway it's all rusted over to about here it was pretty much rusted i don't know if you see that or not let's get i'll get you in come on we'll get off the off the tripod and have a look at this thing no good me yelling at you across the room yeah a little shot of inside of the quarter panel so i'll have to get rid of that under undercoating clean her all up grind those welds down a bit weld them again on the inside Quite a bit of work on this too. Oh, the work, yeah, the rust. I'd be really disappointed if I took that off and didn't have uh, any work to do. Would have broke my heart. <laughs> Anyhow, I knew I knew I wasn't going to be heartbroken. <laughs> like I said, this area here was was rusted on the on the quarter right there, that whole lip. So I just cut it off. You'll see the uh, parts left behind, but it immaterial. So now I have easy access to the wheel tub stuff. And uh, this is the important stuff. Well, it's all important, but this is the structure in here that needs a lot of work. So there's gonna be a lot of time spent in here and inside underneath that uh, torque box lid. It'll have to come off and rebuilt. But yeah, and there's the window, quarter window support is there and there's the quarter window bracket what's left of it it's got a bolt in it still hopefully I get that out no problem but the rust is mostly contained down here except for the wheel arch and uh, I have no idea why this car rusted like it did up here this is a weird oh, the other side is not like this it's just this one side so it's the strangest thing on uh, inside here and outside here it's just weird so i do have the other arch not perfect but uh between the two of them i'm sure i can uh, whip up a, a wheel arch flange and then there's the quarter extensions so a primer on it right to there so right about here i think these these little uh beads where they come in these uh imprints in there which it would be beads. They're large, but they're beads. They were all level on the top, and then they sloped down with the grade of the, of the body into the uh, wheel arch there, the bottom of the wheel arch. But yeah, so this, all, this structure is in good shape. This here is taking a beating. This will have to be rebuilt. I don't know if this is any good on my old 65 out in the, in the back or not. But I think I can make that pretty easy. It's probably easier to make it than to go out and try to take it out. 
This uh, support here needs to be rebuilt, probably made new. It's pretty rough. And then there's work up around the flange area as well. But this makes it a lot easier to work on. Let's, uh, I'm going to get some tools out and then I'm going to close the door and make sure the car didn't shift any. So just hang on. All right, let's see how the door closes. I mean, it's bound to have moved a little bit, but we'll see. No, she's closing pretty good. So there's no, no movement. So that's nice. That's the, the dreaded fear of taking these structures off is losing control of the support. All right. Well, I'm going to have to take a little break and think about where I'm going to start. In all honesty, that uh, wheel top needs to come out, but we shall see. And probably get this in here, but I'm going to think about it. So uh, when I come back, I'll have started working on something. All right, I'm into the rocker panel now. Um, I just wanted to show I, uh, what I've been doing here. It's nothing big. It's just removing spot welds, but I did sh want to show this area right here. Uh, where the welds are. So there's three welds there and maybe one underneath this lead. So there's a bit of lead Like that and three welds that I can find maybe one in there because it is welded On that side, but we'll see when I get in there. I'm just going to use the zip cut and cut that weld off And as you see I just went around these are big very large spot welds So I had to go to a fairly large bit to get them out and up here there's another three welds, but there doesn't appear to be any lead. I don't, yeah, those are just welds. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, underneath, there's two spot welds on the front. And, of course, a whole host of spot welds all the way underneath the, the rocker, right to the back. This here, <clears throat> excuse me, this, these spot welds here on this piece that's left on is for the quarter panel. All right, just pointing that out. Anybody uh, might be doing this work. If you're trying to struggle getting it off, remember to take a grinder and clean that out. I use a wire wheel on a grinder. And uh, both ends, three, three welds to get rid of. Okay, I've got this uh, rocker panel all detached. And I haven't taken it off yet. I wanted to, I wanted to show you folks, or you people, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll say. Uh, it's a, I should also want to mention how much dirt these old cars collect. I've swept the floor twice today already. Anyhow, um, if you're not done one of these, you don't be shocked when you see so much dirt. So I ended up having to use my air chisel because it was just a, too awkward underneath uh, underneath doing the splitting the welds with the, uh, I have a little tool for doing that, but I went to the air chisel and sped it up some. All right, let's get this off. Um, see how she looks. There she goes. There. That rocker, I mean, other than the flange that I pounded out, I'll, have, I'll just have to redo it. This is all gonna be fixed anyway right here, as I said before. But uh, <laughs> you can see where they put lead in. Wow. It looks like they had, uh, that was done right from the factory, I think. That's leaded. Ah, because it's primed right over. Wow, that's a big gob. I wonder if they had to poke a hole through there to spot weld something. But they did, they poked a hole through and they leaded it over. Interesting. And that would have been the factory because it's primed over. Ha! Ah, I don't know how... I don't know how they would have primed over it before they put it on, so that had to have been done before they even put the rocker on the car. Anyway, material at this point, there's the rocker panel. Not much really to them, but this one's rusted here. All right. And of course, it's rusted. Uh, the back is rusted off, too. So let's set that aside. Let's take a look at the, the, the condition of the uh, structure here. So this is the outer member here, and then the inner member, <clears throat> and it joins right here in this pinch weld. And this is the part that is the main structure for the car. 
this is this is important here. So I want that's why I took the rocker off because I know in here on this side I don't know, you can't see it but in there it's uh, it's rusted. But this is looking good. I was really worried about this. But this is really heavy metal. Like it's probably 14 gauge at least. So now I have full access to this uh, this support member. This uh, we'll call it the frame because that's basically what it is. A frame for this car. Well, that's good. <clears throat> a lot less damage in there than I thought it was. Excellent. Okay, now let's do a little check of the door jam, make sure it's not moved any. Look at that, nice and smooth still. I like that. So, it shows I didn't weaken the system, uh, the, uh, weaken the, the structure any by taking that uh, rocker off. The rocker does add structure, but the, those inner and outer members are the important part. <clears throat> So I'm really happy to see that it's mostly in here is where the uh, rust is. And I'm just going to grab you. So hang on, guys. I'm going to grab you up off here and move you around. And you see where I'm talking about inside. And you're still on the tripod, so it's a little bit awkward. So down in here on the, <clears throat> on the inner member, it's going to have to be fixed. But that's about it. So that's uh, pretty darn good. I was really worried about that, and that's a, that's a critical part of this car, on both sides. If those are gone, any of that stuff is gone, you got a mess on your hands. Okay, so now that I know what I'm dealing with with this rig, and I know that there's very little work to be done further along on this rock, on this inner, on these members, I'm going to focus right here in this area, fixing this. So uh, I'm going to leave the wheel tub in. For now, and I may leave that wheel tub and just cut patches out of the old, the one I took out of the green car. It is a shame to take all this structure apart uh, when I can just weld in a piece. Uh, I still have to fix all this on the on the on the donor part. Anyhow, all this has to be fixed. So, but for now, I'm going to focus here because this is again part of the structure, and the, you, you you have to have a good structure. You can't build a house on a poor foundation. Well, you can, but we all know where that leads. So this is, you'll see me working on this going forward right here. Now, while I'm uh, in the mood for it, <laughs> not always the mood for cleaning rust and stuff, but I'm going to use my uh, trimmed down chimney brush. I just have it on a piece of, th of the three-quarter uh, pipe that I had an extra piece of and a little coupling to drop it down because these are threaded. You can also pull it through with a rope. And uh, I did this in the Ranchero video when I was doing the Ranchero to clean the members out. So what I'm going to do, if you're not familiar with that and haven't seen that, and I have room here, otherwise I would have to use the rope, but I have room on this one so I can just go straight in like this. And I'm going to turn my vacuum cleaner on and it'll suck the dust well, some of the dust out that way. So just let me get the vacuum cleaner turned on. And I'm sorry it'll be a little noisy. I'll just turn the volume down, Tom.
All right, let's go through with the brush again, see what we can do. So uh, all I did was take a flu brush and cut it down so it fits in these frame pockets. Uh, this one happens to be the same, pretty much the same size as the Ranchero that I had. But yeah, so there's a lot of stuff still in there. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to use the air hose and the vacuum together to get this end, but I can't reach in there. It's like uh, cleaning your ears with a Q-tip. I just keep pushing it forward. <laughs> anyway, I'll uh, pull you down off the tripod and we'll have a look in there. I'll get a light. Well, let's see if we can see down in there. Hopefully they're just lit up enough. Yeah, there's still, it's not focusing very well. There's still a lot of debris up there, so I'm going to have to keep working with the vacuum and get all that out. Anyway, I'll keep working on it. But uh, this is the chance to do this. All this from that rocker pad. And that's not even uh, what was it went into the vacuum cleaner. I have no idea what's in there. Quite a bit to feel the hose when I was pulling it out. Uh, it's a lot of dirt. All right. So yeah, I'm down here <laughs> admiring the dirt pile. But no, seriously, uh, moving on from this video. And uh, I think it was a pretty good video. We got the quarter panel taken off, rocker panel taken off. I got to use my uh, chimney brush and down the rocker, cleaning up the dirt. So uh, that was pretty good, uh, pretty good run, I think. And next time, we'll be working over here, like I said, in, uh, in the, the torque box. And uh, hey, uh, anybody that's watching this and hasn't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment and just go down and click that bell down there and uh, our subscribe button and hit the bell for the notifications. Help me out a bit. I'd like to get up, uh, you know, over a thousand. That seems to be the, the first milestone for these videos. I'm at uh, 498 right now. Maybe more by the time you see this video, but right now it's 498. I don't, I don't ask very often uh, for people to subscribe, but I'd like to get moving on this channel a little bit. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate the subscribers I do have. And looking forward to new people coming on board and uh, spending time with me here in the shop, getting this old Thunderbird uh, restored. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Keep up the good questions coming. Keep the good questions coming, rather. I uh, really appreciate that as well. And thank you. And we'll see you in the next one.